Okay, so a bit of a heads up here. I don't know what happened to the audio in this episode. I didn't touch anything, and the in-game volume just skyrocketed. So it drowns me out to uh, the point where, well, you can still hear my voice, but it's very, very quiet. And again, in the previous episodes, there was no problem. And when I did a test recording, right before actually recording this video, it sounded fine. But then when I went to record the actual episode, this, I, I, I'm just, I, I don't know, a, a bit of fiddling afterwards got it back to more or less normal, but unfortunately this video is, well, fuck the way it is. So I'm, I'm sorry, and I have no idea what happened. Are we playing or what? I think you're getting played here, but sure. We resume the game with smiles all around. Well, almost. The longer we played, the more into the game everyone became. Needless to say, Amelia quickly guessed Zach's cheats every single time, much as Zach's ever-growing frustration. In the end, I won the game with the first uh, turn out of cards. How? <laughs> How? Not based on my performance. When we were tired of cheat, I taught them a couple of the games. It was late into the night when we all decided to turn in and go to sleep. The sun shines brightly through the window and splashes on my face, forcing me awake. Lana and Amelia are both already awake, but Zack still has his head down as, as if he's still asleep. But is he or is he doing the whole like, I'm just pretending I'm asleep. Mm, carry on. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I look outside and squint at the sky. Uh, what time is it? It's already past noon. We slept through the entire morning. Sounds like me on a daily basis. <laughs> I hate my schedule. You did? Yana giggles on my lawn. Normally that would be a bad thing, but in this case it's okay. We're almost at Bazada. I nod. Alright. Zach gradually wakes up and we all make sure we have uh, we, we all make sure we have all our things. Okay. After their hour or two, the train stops on uh, and announces our arrival to Bazada. The sun hangs high in the sky as one by one we what's with the okay as one by one we step off the train as soon as i set foot in the city i'm assaulted by the sound of voices is there a court in the city yeah okay make shift stop Ooh. just uh give me a second here to look at the it's all colorful and there's mountains in the background and clouds I love it! Market! Building! Scenery! Whee! Makeshift stalls line the sides of the roads and alleys as people pack the streets. Traders and tight onlookers to view their wares and customers haggle in heated shouting matches. <laughs> haggle. Can we have a talk about the price? Sure, of course. Diddly diddly diddly. How about 19.5? Come now, just a little bit more will help will shake on it. All right, so this you. See, I know it comes when arrangement. <laughs> uh, are we going to have to travel from that? I glance at the thought of getting trapped amidst a sea of people like sardines in a can. We have arrived in Basada. Yes, we have. Thank you, GPS. Is Volvo fine in Embermist? No, as I said, it is the closest city to Embermist. That is what she said. Considering the bus was playing, I find it a little hard to believe that the hidden city is so close. I mean, hidden, implying that it's not just going to be out in plain fucking sight. Ugh. No wonder Liana seems so surprised. Amelia seems to read my thoughts. Of course. Close is a relative yeah. term. We must first traverse some rough terrain and pass through the forest before we find Embermist. Yeah, exactly. It's closest. It doesn't mean that it's like right next to it. She points toward the south where I can make out the tips of treetops, and she glances up at the sky. Considering only a few hours remain before nightfall, it may be in our best interest to spend the evening here in the city and depart in the morning. We get to add another inn, that's probably gonna look like all the rest. <laughs> that's me. Uh, but yeah, I figured as much. Hey, maybe we can experience the, you know, Bazada. Is that a plan that I underwork Bazaar? Then or not. Nope. Good thinking. This marketplace is so huge. 
People say you can literally buy your heart's desires here. Other people say you can actually buy other people's hearts here. Is there something you're thinking of buying? Nothing in particular, but I would like to check out the stalls. Yeah. Traders from all over the world gather here to sell their wares. Hi! Hi. I glance out of my feet and watch the Pongo wiggle excitedly. He casts hungry looks into the crowd. Is there a lot of magic here? That means the giants are excited and seem first try to eat me. Amelia bends down and scrutinizes them. She pokes them with a finger and the Pongo giggles. Hi, boy! Oh, that's cute. I'm going to the inn. I'll meet up with you later. The board of us can react, Zach slips into the crowd. Should we go after him? Amelia doesn't even blink at Zach's departure. She's too preoccupied with the Pongo. Lana shakes her head. No, but since Zach left, I'm going to go too. Should we meet back up at the inn? Uh, sure. I guess it leaves me with Amelia. Hey, we get to know the new girl a bit better. I am curious too, so sure. She nods and heads into the crowd. Since everyone else seems to know what they want to do, what do I want to do? So I'm going to assume that you're to check on Zach, be a loner. <laughs> Oh, okay, so actually the option to go with me on I want. Um, I kind of want to spend some with Amelia. She's new, I don't know much about her, and I should get to know if she'll be part of the party, so... Yeah, I mean, I'm curious. Let's be friendly, let's be sociable. I hope that's how it's going to happen. I was about to seek out Amelia. Wasn't she right there? Did she wander off too? I stand by awkwardly while Amelia mutters to herself. She seems to be in the middle of something and doesn't notice my presence. Hmm. Male. Adolescent. Of a Cerulean variant. What? She holds out a bracelet. The Pongo blink- Oh, she's talking with the Pongo. The Pongo blinks at it, then looks back at her. Amelia cocks her head to the side as she observes him. With Amelia's attention still on him, the Pongo scoots closer to the uh, bracelet looks at her again. Go on. She constantly sniffs the bracelet, then sticks the tongue out. It's a slime, but then it feel like a tendril, or never mind. To lick the, the air. Afterwards, he grins widely at Amelia. Oh? Interesting. Normally, a cerulean pongo will leave out even the slightest trace of magical residue. Amelia doesn't have the chance to finish as the pongo springs into her arms. Poi, poi. <laughs> she fumbles with the cat the catch and pulls the pongo close to her chest to stabilize it. What do you think you're? Her voice trails off as she looks down at the smiling pongo. Poi. Amelia. Oh, okay, that's cute. Amelia blinks as the caution melts away from her face. The corners of her mouth curl up in a smile and she squeezes the pongo with a cup. Poi, poi! Aww. The pongo weaves as he squishes against her chest. Join in. <laughs> that's, that's even a two forward. Aww, so cute. Aww, you do like him. Amelia gasps and drops her arms, letting the pongo tumble to the ground. Poi. Yeah, going over the group pog would have been funny, but I mean, that, that seems like it would have been a bit, you know, too much like, hey, personal space. You don't have any now. <clears throat> I was merely conducting analysis. Sure you were, Twin Tails. Hi. <laughs> the Pongo hops back into worms and slugs against her. Amelia's cheeks tinge, uh, tinge pink. She clears her throat. Regardless, I am going to the apothecary. An apothecary? Can we just heal with magic? Yes. There are mages who specialize in healing magic, but they use earth magic which neither Liana nor I possess. Such, you will need to purchase healing items to treat a wound. Sounds good. Thanks for me. Let me to go with you. No, mm -hmm. it will be faster if I go alone. Before I even have a chance to react, she turns on her heels and walks away. As she goes, the Pongo pops his face over her shoulder and gazes longingly at me. Oh, boy! A single tear rolls down his cheek. No, my precious baby boy. Pongo! I reach out for him as the distance between us grows. Wait a minute, why is he making that face? He could literally leave at any time and just come back to me. Come back! He turns around and disappears from my view. This sneaky little Pongo. Okay, Liana then. I head in the same direction. I think Liana's gone and duck into the crowd. I try not to bump into too many people as I explore the marketplace. I've never seen a place this crowded before. Did, were, were you from a city? Like, you I've never seen a place as crowded before. It doesn't feel like I'm walking with being pushed by everyone. Despite all the people, I'm fascinated by the market stalls. Which just sell all different types of merchandise, ranging from clay pottery to magic amulets. Well, I like pottery. As I'm being pulled in the crowd, I see a glimpse of blonde hair and white armor. That must be Liana. 
away from the crowd and see Viana frozen in place. Hey, Liana. She blinks at me. Hey! How's the marketplace so far? Really interesting. There's a lot of cool stuff I haven't seen before. So why did you have a weird look on your face when I found you? She seems distracted. Do you smell that? Uh, I breathe in deeply. I'll just go with this. An overwhelming, an overwhelmingly sweet smell lost behind the breeze. But in a way, I couldn't. I think it's coming from that stall over there. Come on! She darts back into the crowd, and I quickly fall into a stop at a stall filled with delicate glass bottles. Is this perfume? Yes, welcome, welcome. Hi. A tanned man in silken robes, uh, uh, silken robes, and I can't talk, ushers us closer to the stall. He selects a glass bottle filled with a pale pink liquid and offers it to Liana. A noble scent to match such a noble woman. That is such a used line, man. <laughs> Liana blushes and delicately sniffs the bottle, her eyes wide in recognition. Is that extract of spirit orchid? Spirit orchid? It only blew. It, 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 you can only find it where the moon shines down at night, revealing its. Uh, effulgent petals, ghostly luminance in the, in the water. I don't know. Yes, yes, very rare from the far celestial mountains. I never expected to find this perfume here. What is it? Leon offers me the bottle and I take a sip of the whip. It smells fruity like a cross in an apple and a pear. Is this is a flower? She nods. The spirit orchid. It only grows in the deep forest of the Celestial Mountain Range. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why is it called the Spirit Orchid? The roots are a very pale white. And when it grows, it almost looks like it's floating midair, like a spirit. Oh, cool. That's kind of neat. She nods absentmindedly and continues to hold the bottle. Do you want to get it? Nana quickly shakes her head. Oh, sorry. It just reminds me of home. Well, uh what way? Celestial Mountains or someone you knew wore it? My grandmother used ah. to wear this perfume whenever she left the house. When I was little, that meant taking me down to the market. Aw, sweet. She smiles fond of memory, but her eyes hold a hint of sadness. Oh. I loved wandering the shops and stalls. It didn't matter if I had nothing to buy. It was a chance to leave the house and be like everyone else. Sounds like you didn't get it, uh, sounds like you didn't get to go out much. It was complicated. Magic, I'm guessing, or something? She doesn't offer up any more information. It returns the bottle to a blank spot on the shelf. Although she's been very helpful in helping me um, understand this world, we ended up talking about her past much. I glanced at her again. She looks pensive at the bottle, a small crease in her brow. Suddenly, a new scent cuts the floral perfume. It smells of cinnamon and spice. Cookies. Hey, Yana, do you smell that? She jolts out of her thoughts and blinks. Smell what? I think it's going to stall over there. I grin, and just as she did before, I dart back into the street. Uh, hey, wait! No, no, you gotta keep up. Come on! Chop, chop! The way we weave through the people before stopping in front of the stall for an assortment of baked goods. Oh. I breathe in the heavenly sweetness of sugar and sigh contentedly. Liana closes her eyes and inhales. It smells so delicious! Uh huh. I browse the array of cookies and tiny cakes. Liana gasps. <gasps> They have cinnamon parfaits. I love those. What are those? They're cinnamon and vanilla custard layers with apricots. Hmm. What do you think looks good? Cupcakes. Oh, since you like them so much, I'll try the cinnamon parfaits. Actually, cinnamon parfait you mentioned sounds really good. They are. And they're not super sweet either, which is why I like them. I'm the... Like cinnamon with like custard and because of the that does sound really good. I finished my pocket for my winnings from yesterday. Today's treats are on me. Now looks amused. Are you sure you want to use your life savings? I... Yes, I do. <laughs> I chuckled. Don't worry, you've been very generous toward me ever since Metal Hill. It's the least I can do to repay you. I know it's not much, but please consider this the token of my appreciation. Yana smiles bashfully. <laughs> Thank you. At least you didn't say affection like a dimwit. I grin, then pay for a cinnamon parfait for Liana and a dessert for myself. Cheers. Hold up my dessert and take a bite. 
As if sweetness melts on my tongue, I let out a contented sigh. This is even better than I imagined. Yelena giggles and lets out an equally happy sigh as she bites into her seven pound bag. This is why I love markets. I nod in agreement as we return to the street. One of the guards the marketplace notices Yana's mage guild emblem and pulls up the talk. Sorry, I need to take this. And he calls, huh? It just looks like a like official business. I've been leaving be. We can catch up later then. She smiles. Okay. <sighs> Fine. Zack went straight to the end in Lumia too. What's going on in all these inns? I'd like to know. I don't know. Clodazon's information. Maybe he just wants to be alone. I rush into the street and look for any sign of the end. Luckily, I managed to spot Zack in the crowd before he disappears back into the sea of people. Shifting my way down the street, I finally look at the inn just in time to see Zack. He sends in front of a large notice board. Uh, oh, also might be your people pin jobs. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It's like a witcher board. Uh, I have a pin papers. Well, not which or whatever, my guy. Yeah, we got the exact term they use in the game. It's been a long time playing it. As we get closer, I can make out some of the flyers, which include a portrait of a scowling face and a large monetary number. Is that checking out one of posters? Maybe he's looking for a specific bounty. I'm about to call out when I'm, to him when a young blonde uh, wearing a skin tight suit of armor flounces over to him. Twirling a lock of hair between her fingers, she seems to steady the board. Every so often, she shoots a pointed, uh, she shoots pointed glance over to Zack, hoping to catch his eyes, but his attention never wavers from the board. Finally, she speaks. Do you have a bounty on your heart? For the first time since her arrival, Zack looks at her. She grins devilishly. Because I'm looking to collect. <laughs> he refocuses on the board and she frowns. For a second attempt, she bumps up her ample chest and touches his arm as she speaks in a sickly sweet voice. So, are you a bounty hunter? Zack shrugs her arm off of him. No. Then you must be a mercenary. He doesn't answer. She seems to take that as a sign of encouragement and her sultry smile returns. She leans in close to him and runs her finger up his arm. I've got a mission that I could use some help with. Are you for hire? I have a cave that could use clear. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Again, Zack brushes her hands off of him and steps away from him. From her. No. She seems a little taken aback, but quickly recovers and slides closer to him. Are you sure there isn't something I could offer to change your mind? Uh, the persuasive powers of the thought are no match for the simple mind of the mercenary. No. She sighs before placering, plastering bleh, that same smile that's at a small laugh. Jeez, you're kind of dense. I was hoping to spend some intimate time with you. So, what do you say? Very sorry to interrupt you. What kind of phrasing is that? No thanks. But if I'm ever in need of your services, then I'll go find you at the brothel. Ooh. Woman's eyes grow wide like saucers. With a sharp huff, she tries to slap Zack, who slides it out of the way. <gasps> Just that another huff war storming off. I may be interested in sex service. No. I hail slide of her way as she stomps toward the exit. Whoa, she did not look happy. Well, that was weird. I go stand beside Zack. What was that about? What do you think? I'm not that dense. He shrugs. Who cares? I take a look at the one imposing on the board. Most of these faces look like the generic weathered and scarred bandits I imagined. Huh. Is this what you'd take care of in Illumia? Zack fixes his expressionless eyes on me. When we first reached Illumia, the first thing you did was find the inn. And then when we came here, you did the exact same thing. He relaxes slightly enough. Just staying up to date on the news. Yeah. And his life of, miner of a mercenary is pretty interesting. Something like that. Excuse me, are you a mercenary? Oh my god! As one, Zack and I turn to face at the scantily dressed woman. This one has fiery red hair and a mischievous glint in her eye. Zack narrows his eyes. Yes? Are you sure you're not a rogue? Because you've just stolen my heart! Uh... 
<laughs> Sometimes the world is just so beautiful, you know? Oh my god, this is awesome. Zach sighs and face palms. I have a bad feeling about this. Sorry there, lady killer. Zack ends up shaking her off and searches for the innkeeper to buy a drink. I'm ready for a little bit of me time. And the crowd for the free show the marketplace has to offer. After exploring the city, I meet up with the rest of the crew back at the inn. Tensions are high as we eat in silence. I think everyone is a mixture of weariness and anxiety for the next leg of our journey. Even the Pongo is strangely silent and obedient. Once we finish eating, we head upstairs to find our rooms. Upon finding her room, Liana suddenly perks up. Oh, Amelia! You and I will be sharing our room tonight. Well, that makes sense. Amelia speaks dismissively. Naturally. That would be more appropriate than the alternative. <laughs> she pauses, then looks at Liana with interest. Are you insinuating that you would rather share a bedroom with them? Uh, nothing about what she said insinuated anything of the sort. Amelia points to Zack and me. B what? No! Of course not! Oh, my mistake. Of course you could not have met both of them. There aren't nearly enough beds. You must have meant him. Um, Amelia points to me. Don't you turn those blank eyes to me, you twin-tailed little... No. Liana's face turns pink and she shakes her head. Amelia! That's not true! If that is false, then why is your face red? Probably because she's embarrassed you're making the, assertment, uh, the, uh, the assertion in the first place. That's what I guess. The point is, I'd obviously rather share a room with you. Amelia blinks. If that is the case, then why even bring it up? Maybe just to clarify? Because I'm excited! It'll be nice to have some girl time. Ah, yes, the mystical thing known as cool. Amelia studies Liana the nods. I concur. Sharing a room has proven to strengthen bonds amidst peers and foster camaraderie. Have fun conversing with the computer, Liana. You mean, make friends? Yeah. Precisely. Liana grins and Amelia smiles back. Polly? We all glance down at the Pongo by our feet. Is it my imagination or is he trying to ask which room is he going to sleep in tonight? Amelia snatches up him up in her arms. The Pongo needs to spend the night with us tonight. We need him for science. <laughs> no, that's cute. Keep him, whatever. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's nice having him around. Your reaction's adorable. As Amelia slips into the bedroom, Liana nods rapidly. Yes, for science. Wait, I, what, why are you agree? What? What? Okay, now I'm actually kind of paranoid. Then follows Amelia into the room and slams the door shut. There's a moment of silence as Zack and I stare at the closed door. Is it just me, or did that seem unusually suspicious to you? That... It's a bit of an understatement. I'm also just confused. Is the Pongo just not use me instead? <laughs> yeah, I... It, it's one of the... Is the Pongo that special? For some reason, I feel like we missed out by not securing the Pongo. Zack shakes his head. More like we dodged a blast. Uh, what? What do you mean, bullet? Bullet? I guess idioms don't translate well here. Never mind. Still baffled by what happened. Zack and I enter our room and get ready for bed. Although the train was more comfortable than I expected, it cannot compare to a real bed. As I snuggle into the blankets, I soon drift into a restful slumber.